Hello everyone, I'm Sirius Simmer and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make custom likes and dislikes for your game. Okay, so before we begin, you're going to need three things. Firstly, our tutorial folder, which you guys can find on my Patreon page. It's totally free. Um, this contains all of our package files that we're going to need for you, so you guys can follow along, as well as examples of the finished product. Next, you're going to need Sims 4 Studio. If you don't know, Sims 4 Studio is a program that allows you to create and edit package files for your mods. So you can go ahead and download that completely free as well. And thirdly, you're going to need XML Injector. So XML Injector is a mod by Scumbumbo that allows you to inject the interactions for your mod into your game. This just means it allows the interactions to show up in your game. Uh, you also have the option of downloading Triplice's Sims Hash Assistant to the modder. This uh, allows you to generate hash code to use as uh, to use for your custom text. Uh, Sims 4 Studio also has a function that does this, so it is a bit redundant, but I'm going to explain more about why I recommend it later on. And you also have the option of downloading the tuning description browser. This is so, so helpful and I recommend it to anyone who is just starting out with modding. It is literally a dictionary of all the um, XML tunings that you'll see within the body of the um, XML resources once you open up your package file. It tells you what all of those things mean and it has been uh, essential in my modding journey. Okay, so if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. I am going to start posting Sims 4 content regularly. I want to start sharing uh, my mods with the Sims 4 community, so any uh, support you can give me would be really helpful. So let's get into the tutorial. Thank you. Okay, hello. Since Hermione was actually my inspiration to make a custom preference for homework, she is also going to be our test dummy. You open up under activities, you see we have the homework. I'm gonna say she likes homework, of course. Okay, so when you open up the game, you'll notice that in her hobbies and skills, in her profile, it says homework, it's added there. Let's just click on her dad. And let's open up Hermione's sim profile. So you can also see the likes and dislikes up here. Okay, so I actually made a club so she could do homework and we could try to get an adventure moment. Um, they, they do come randomly and honestly, mostly I've just seen the adventure moment for fitness and gaming come up most. So if I can't get one on camera, I'll just show you a screenshot of it um, when I actually do, so. I started gathering, got to do homework, make sure she gets her correct buffs. Okay, you see immediately she got her buff for loving homework. Okay. So now that she's doing homework, she should be able to click on another sim. Okay. And um, enthuse them about homework. And they're their friendly socials. Yeah, she can. Okay, it's functional. Now on to the tutorial. So I want you guys to go ahead and open up the custom preference tutorial folder you would have downloaded from my Patreon page. And when you open it up, you're going to see two types of package files, one with a broadcaster and one without. This package file here contains a broadcaster tuning resource, and that's used for activities such as violin, guitar, piano, anything where your, your sim is performing. And you would want the people watching the performance to receive a buff as well or react to it in a way. Um, today we are going to be doing the custom preference for soccer. So we're not going to need a broadcaster. However, I left it in there just in case maybe someone has made their own custom activity where they would want where it's perform where it's a performance in some way. And I'm gonna go over later in the video how they would go about tuning that resource. But the process is entirely the same for those of you using the broadcaster 
a package file. Um, so we're going to copy and paste this package right there into the folder and we're going to rename it. We're going to put our creator name and then the custom preference you'll be working on today. As I've said, today I'm going to do soccer, um, but yours is whatever it is. Okay, now we're gonna open up some Sports Studio. Okay, see I've already been working on my other ones. But I want you guys to, before we open up the package we just renamed, I want you guys to go over here, make sure you have standalone with color selected and go to and click on object now we're going to type in the object we're looking for this is the soccer ball that comes with discover university select it press next and it's going to ask you to save it um we're going to save it in our custom preference tutorial folder give it a name i'm literally just going to name it soccer ball Okay, so you're gonna go to the warehouse tab over here, scroll down and select one of these object catalog tuning resources. It doesn't matter which one, either will do. And then you scroll down over here in its data tab until you get to this part called tags, select edit items. And we're looking for the function tag that's unique to it. And for this, it's literally just function underscore soccer ball. So we're gonna make note of that as well as make note of its tag value. I'm gonna do that on a sticky note. Add a new one. Okay. Okay. Now, that out and we can exit that out and we can press cancel because we're not going to need this anymore okay so now we're going to click on my projects and open up the package file we just renamed okay so when we open up this package file i want you guys to take note of a few of these resources all these over here are your different tuning resources um so the first three up here which is loot know about sim preference activities test set instance sim preference object activities any dislike and test set instance sim preference object activity activities any like they are going to be overrides this means that while we're changing things within the body of their xml over here in this tab we won't be changing their names or their instance ids oh i just resorted it my mistake but we won't be changing their names or their instance ideas so the game will recognize them as the original even though we've made modifications okay and that's these three right here now we are going to go in and change the names and instance ideas of all the other resources we're going to add our creator name and our custom preference to them and then we're going to get a new instance number i'm going to show you how to do that first i'm going to do it for a buff and then i'm going to show you how to do it for a trait because the process is a little bit different okay so First, we're gonna take this buff, buffs and preference, recent likes, custom preference. You could start however you want, maybe even go down the line, but I'm just showing you guys for an example, of course. So that was its sim data file, so we need the buff itself, which is this one. Okay, so you're gonna go to the data tab like I did, and you're gonna enter your creator name, and then your custom preference. And when you press enter, you're going to notice that you got a new instance number and a new tuning ID. So the instance number usually changes automatically within the XML tab. But make sure you check on this because I've noticed sometimes it doesn't and you want to be sure that they match up there. I mean the tuning ID. Sorry, I think I said instance number. This is the tuning ID. And so... You're going to take the instance number now, you're going to copy it, and you're going to go to the corresponding sim data file over here, which is this one. Uh, 
yeah which is this one and you're gonna paste it right there okay so then you're going to take the name you're gonna go back to the send data file and you're gonna go X go to its XML and paste it right up there where it says name okay now you could to get this new instance number like we just did you could have also gone up here to tools opened up a hash generator taken the name copy it and then paste it right here where it, says, where it says text press enter and then you see the fmv64 code down here is the same as the instance id we got up here this method is really helpful if maybe you are starting with an empty package file and you were you needed to create resources through the add resource button right here. This is how you would do go about getting the instance number for that. Okay, now that we renamed that, I want us to rename a trait. So we're gonna do the trait for likes activities, and it's this one right up here. Now so renaming this is its data file we're gonna go to uh the trait tuning itself so renaming a trait is a bit different because the instance id requires a different fmv code so you start the same way creator name you're gonna copy it and this time you need to use the hash generator you need to open it back up paste and you're gonna get the FNV 32 code let me make sure that's the right one yeah you're gonna get its FNV 32 code right here and then paste that into the instance press enter and it'll make it a longer number with zeros in front of it and then you got a new tuning ID as well again take the tuning id put it in the xml file if they already didn't i think that they did they did great and so then you take the the instance copy it and paste it to its uh sim data file which is this one up here okay and then take the name you could always just change the name manually but i like to copy and paste Paste it right there. Okay, great. So the reason you need an FNV32 code rather than the FNV64 uh, code you see here is because a patch like about a year ago, maybe more, made it so that uh, the SIM profiles that we got a while back would have a glitch if a trait was made with an FNV64 instance ID. So you might have noticed around that time that some of your custom traits were broken from other mods, and this is why. Okay, something else that I want to make note of here is this tool called the Sims Hash Assistant to the Modder, which is exactly like the Sims 4 Studios Hash Generator, but it's an independent tool made by, I believe, Triplis. Um, so you would paste the name in there and also get the same ideas paste it see we got the same fnv32 code down here but we also got something called an fnv32 high bit and an fnv64 high bit and it is a lot better to use fmv32 like i said i am a beginner modder uh so i can't tell you the technicalities of why this is i think it has something to do with you don't want your whatever instance id you've gotten to conflict with a uh, uh, one in the game uh, but literally all the tutorials that i have read have mentioned something about getting the fmv high bit now i've already uh, made this mod that i'm showing you so i know that the fmv32 a uh, regular bit does not conflict at all so you'll be fine um, but if you do find yourself running into problems for whatever reason, maybe try changing the instance ID of your traits to FMV32 high bit. Okay, that's all I wanted to say here. And this is a tool that finds that for you automatically. I know there's a way you could use math to find it. I am not going to be using math to find it. But yeah, that's just something I wanted to mention. Okay.
Okay, so now you're gonna now I'm gonna go and rename all of these uh, tuning resources and I'm gonna get back to you guys when I am done with that process. Okay, so I was re-watching the footage and I realized that our instance, uh, num our tuning ID, I mean, sorry, our tuning ID for our trait didn't change within the XML. Uh, if you go back, you would have noticed it was like, one, it was still 1-7 something, that really long 20-digit uh, number. But because we've ha we have a shorter instance number, of course, the tuning ID is also going to be shorter. So you want to make sure you copy that. I already said this, but copy it, make sure you paste it into uh, the body of the XML so that S right up here is the same as the tuning ID. Okay, I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Okay, so I've renamed all my resources except for those three that we talked about and I saved my package and I closed it and then opened it up again. That's really important, you guys. You want to save it and close and reopen periodically. This isn't me being like a cautious mentor or whatever. This Sims 4 Studio really does have a way of not letting changes stick. I love Sims 4 Studio, but there have been times where I've come back in and hours of work were just missing. And that's com a pretty common issue. Just so please save, close, reopen. Okay. Um, now I'm going to show you guys how to make a string table resource. Uh, so this is what's going to allow us to add custom text into our mod that will then show up in the game. Okay, so first you want to start by opening up your hash generate generator again. I have it still open right here. Now, honestly, you could name this anything, but I do like to keep the naming of my resources specific to what they are. Um, so I'm just going to call this string underscore sim preference underscore soccer. Um, and so this time, oh no, this time we're going to get the FNV64 code, but when we do, we're going to leave out these first two numbers. We're just going to take the last few numbers there. going to copy it. You're going to click add down here. Okay. And then you're going to press this drop down menu and search for uh, the string table resource. This is in alphabetical order. So just go down to S. Um, boop, 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 boop. And here. Here it is, R type underscore string table. And then you're gonna paste the number you just got and add two zeros in front of it. This is going to uh, let the game recognize this has a English string table. And at the end of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to copy your string table to all languages. It is literally so easy, just two clicks. But we're gonna do that at the end, okay. So see, we've added the string table resource. It's got the little US flag for English. Okay, so the tutorial was getting pretty long and I didn't want to overwhelm anybody. So I decided to break it up into three parts. So in the second part of the tutorial, we're going to go in and edit the body of the XML. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you in part two. And again, please like and subscribe if you can. Thank you. Goodbye.